we go to the White House and senior advisor to the president, Stephen Miller, who helped to craft the president's controversial executive order calling for more rigorous vetting of immigrants from seven Middle Eastern countries. Uh, Mr. Miller, welcome. Good to have you here tonight. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you. So everybody is anticipating the next rollout of the next executive order, which is to, supposed to clarify some of the issues that were perhaps wrong with the first one and then got you caught up in the courts. So how is it going to be different this time? Well, nothing was wrong with the first executive order. However, there was a flawed judicial ruling that was erroneous. Uh, the president uh, recently um, read the statute from the Immigration Nationality Act, which clearly states he has the power as president to impose any restrictions he deems necessary when it's in the national interest. However, because of the exigency of the situation and the need to protect our country and to protect our citizens. The president is going to be issuing a new executive action based off of the judicial ruling, flawed though it may be, to protect our country and to keep our people safe, and that is going to be coming very soon. All right. Um, Grant Burchette is 18 years old, but he wants to know specifically how the second order is going to be different. Well, one of the big differences that you're going to see in the executive order is that it's going to be responsive to the judicial ruling, which didn't exist previously. And so those are mostly minor, minor technical differences. Fundamentally, you're still going to have the same basic policy outcome for the country, but you're going to be responsive to a lot of very technical issues that were brought up by the court, and those will be addressed. But in terms of protecting the country, those, those basic policies are still going to be in effect. I, I want to try and broaden the conversation here and not get lost in all this technical minutia. Here's the reality. The United States admits more people than any other country on the face of the earth. We've had a serious problem in our country of terrorism, radicalization, and serious problems of people joining ISIS, joining terror groups, joining al-Qaeda, and committing or attempting to commit acts of crime and terror against we have seen a Miller, huge nexus it, it question, between this. Let me, let me jump in on you there for a moment. Yeah. Let me because he, here's one of the problems. Now I know that you think the order was fine the way it was it was issued initially, uh, but courts disagreed. In fact, 48 courts took issue with it, and that's why it's halted right now as a result of that process that happens in this country. So now you're about to issue another order, and one of the things that that would need to be addressed, it sounds like, is proving that the seven countries that you have targeted are indeed the right ones to target and that you have merit and reason for targeting those specific ones rather than, say, Saudi Arabia, right? Well, the, the reality is these seven countries were designated by President Obama and by Congress in 2015 and 2016. The, the reality is that these seven countries, look at Yemen, look at Libya, look at Syria, look at the conditions in these countries. This is an assessment based on the threat these countries post post today and going into the future. We've had dozens and dozens of terrorism cases from these seven countries, case after case after case. But more fundamentally, it's the position of our intelligence community that these countries today pose a threat to our country moving forward. And the president is acting decisively to protect our country from these threats. And the rulings from those courts were flawed, erroneous, and false. The president's actions were clearly legal and constitutional and consistent with the long-standing tradition of presidents in the past to exercise the authority in the Immigration and Nationality Act to suspend immigration when it poses a threat to our security. And that's what the president will do. In the next few days, we'll roll out the details of what that action will be. And we understand... I'm sorry, I think we have a little bit of delay, so I don't mean to be stepping on you. Um, but I, I do understand that, that that's your perspective and that's the White House's argument. And we'll see how that next ruling looks. One more question to you from one of our viewers for tonight, um, if you will. Jack Capra, who is a veteran in our audience this evening, says, How far is the administration willing to go to secure the southern border? Would the administration deploy the U.S. military to do so? Well, right now we have 20,000 fantastic Border Patrol agents who are doing a great job. But, Martha, I really want to try and broaden this conversation and get to the, the core of the issues here. Whether we're talking about the new executive action, and in the next few days, we will be able to share the details of what that will be and how it's responsive to the court's ruling. Whether we're talking about the southern border, whether we're talking about our guest worker programs, here's the core issue. 
It is the job of the president and the job of our government to protect, to protect the hard working people of this country, to protect their jobs, to protect their wages, to protect their communities, to keep them safe from terrorism and crime and drugs and wage suppression. Uncontrolled migration over many years has undermined wages, working prospects for people of all backgrounds and all walks of life, and it's made us less safe. Proper controls will raise wages, improve employment, help migrant workers enter the middle class who are already living here, and keep us safe from threats of terror. And this president and this administration is fully committed to doing what is necessary, lawful, just, decent, and right to take care of and to defend hardworking, patriotic citizens and their communities. All right. Well, we'll we look very much forward uh, to that second executive order and we'll watch the path and uh, see if it makes it through the courts and that, you know, the executive branch and the judicial branch can can find their way to put this together. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen.